Celtic legends, the children of Lear. Fenula was a princess, and she was the daughter of King Lear, and she had three brothers, I, Fiechra, and Con. Fiechra and Con were twins, and they were as wild as hares, constantly running around. The only time they were still was at the end of the day when their mother sang them to sleep. But the queen died, and everyone in the land was very sad for a long, long time. But King Lear married again. Aoife, his new wife, was very beautiful, but what no one knew was that she was a witch. She was jealous of Lear's love for his children and came to hate them. She especially hated it when Fenula sung their mother's songs to Con and Fiechra, because she herself had a voice like a crow and couldn't sing a note. One day, though, she said to Fenula, Let's get your brothers and we'll go and visit your grandfather. They all got into Aoife's chariot. They hadn't gone far when they stopped at a lake. It was a beautiful sunny day. Why don't you all go swimming, my little chickens, said Aoife. And Fenula was worried at this. Why was Aoife being nice? She was never nice. Stop, she called to her brothers. Don't go in the water, but it was too late. I was already swimming in the middle of the lake. Con and Fiechra were splashing each other wildly. Fenula went to the water's edge and called to her brothers again, but Aoife waved her wand and cast a spell over the children. Fenula began to feel very strange indeed. She could see feathers sprouting all over her arms and legs. Her toes became webbed like a duck's. She looked at her brothers. The same thing was happening to them. The four children had disappeared, and instead there were four swans in the water. Aoife stood on the bank of the lake laughing. Now you can all sing all you like. Then she chanted her spell. You will be swans for nine hundred years. The first three hundred years you will spend here. The next three hundred years you will spend on the North Sea. And the next three hundred years you will spend on the Western Ocean. Only the sound of a Christian bell will save you. And only then you will become human again. Con and Fiechra started to cry. Fenula wanted to cry too, but she said... We will fly to her father and tell him what has happened. They told King Lear what Aoife had done, and Lear was very angry. He could do magic too, and he changed Aoife into a hideous black crow. She flew away from the palace, cawing angrily, but Lear could not break the spell on his children. So every day he went to the lake, where he sat and listened to them singing. And when he himself died, they still came to that spot to sing together and remember their father. At the end of three hundred years, though, the four swans had to leave. They flew to the North Sea, where the sea there was wild, and the waves so high they washed over the swan children when they tried to rest. The wind was icy. Sometimes their feet froze to the rocks. They often huddled together, and Fenula held her brothers under her wings to try to keep them warm. At last the three hundred years in the North Sea were over, and the swans flew over Ireland to the Western Ocean. In the Western Ocean there was grass instead of hard rocks. Inishglora was their favourite island. They would watch the sun set over the sea and sing quietly together. People in the ships passing by heard them and thought they were listening to mermaids. One day, when they were out fishing, Fiechra, Con and I came to Fenula. Con said, something strange is happening on Inishglora. The four swans flew towards the island. There they saw a holy man, and he was building a tiny hut of stones. He sang as he worked. When he had finished, he tied something shiny to the top of the hut. It was a bell. The wind blew, and the bell began to ring. The children had never heard anything so lovely. The holy man looked up at the four beautiful swans flying around and round above him. Come down, my friends, he said. I have heard you singing. Come down and sing with me. But as soon as the four children landed on the island, something strange happened. Their feathers fell from them. The webs fell from their toes. Fenula looked at her brothers. She saw three very old men, and she herself was a very old woman. The holy man looked sadly at them. He knew now from the old stories that they were the children of Lear and that they were going to die. But Fenula smiled and said, Don't be sad. We are very tired. We have lived very long lives, too long. We'll be happy to sleep here on your island. 
The holy man baptised the four children, then they lay down on the soft green grass behind the little hut, and all the birds of the island came to sing them to sleep. The Children of Leah was read by Tom Purvis.